to our channel. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to stay up to date with all the content that we put out. At this point, we've got success coaches who are recording content and putting it out there. It, almost every 24 hours, we've got a video going out on our YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe to stay up to date with, with everything that, that we put out, which I know will help you and your business uh, to grow and to scale. Okay, so don't stay stuck. Make sure you subscribe and stay up to date with the latest content. Now, if you want to also get in contact with me to discuss anything that I'm about to talk about today, or if you have any other questions that you would like to, to get on a get on a quick call to ask me any questions you might have about your business, then there's two ways you can do that. First way is in the Calendly, there, there will be a, in the description of this video, there's a Calendly link. You can click on it and book a free 15 to 20 minute call. I do these calls Monday to Friday, every single day. I speak with coaches via Zoom, ask them questions, get an insight into how they're running their business, how they're operating, what is working, what is not working. And I share with them some actionable steps that they can take straight away to, to grow and scale. Now, if you don't want to do that and you just want to send me an email with a question, you can do that as well. My email is in the description as well. It's makemoneycoachingsports at gmail.com. Right, so let's get straight into today's video. And today I want to talk about how to open multiple soccer centers across the country. Now, I've got no doubts that today's video and the content I'm going to share with you today is worth thousands of dollars. Okay, there's coaches who pay us, pay our company thousands of dollars to get our, our consulting, our help with stuff like we're going to talk about like stuff that I'm going to be talking about today. Okay. Now for you guys, you're fortunate, fortunate enough that you're going to get a, a sneak preview into how to do it. But we have done this with multiple coaches in, in multiple sports. We've done it with coaches in baseball, in soccer, in basketball. So we have done it with coaches in, in a various number of sports who have opened multiple centers across the United States. And well, they're, they're currently doing it right now. So we have a lot of experience in what I'm going to be sharing with you today. And I hope this helps. Again, if you want to reach out to me and you want to talk about anything that I'm sharing, sharing with you, then you can do that by going into the description of this video, click on my Calendly link. Let's jump on a call and I can share you, share with you some, some steps that you can take uh, this week to start to grow and scale your business, uh, not just locally, but nationally as well. Okay, so there's three things that you must do in order to open multiple centers across the country. Now, this video is more specific to soccer, but the principles can be used in all sports. Okay, if you're in basketball, you can use these, these principles. If you're in baseball, you can use these principles. If you're in American football, you can use these principles, right? Whatever sport you're in, these principles, uh, they, are, they are similar or the same, okay? So there's a lot more to this, but for, for reasons, okay, I'm going to break it down into three two or three points per section, okay? Because as I mentioned at the beginning, we do charge a lot of money for this type of consulting. And if you if this is something you want to do with your business, go, go national, okay? Reach out to us and we can help you with this, okay? So the first one is build one solid location first that creates great reputation for your business. So if you're a a soccer trainer, okay, and you currently have one location that you're using, in order to grow nationally, okay, you need to make sure that that one location is solid, it's got a great reputation, you're getting great results with your, your current clients, 
people in your local area, in your local town, in your local city, they all know you, they love you, they trust you, okay? And everyone is talking about what you do, okay? Because if you want to go national, right, this is the reputation you need to take with you when you go into different cities, okay? So when a, when a business owner looks to go from, say they have a center in Baltimore, and they lo they're looking to, to open a second center all the way in San Antonio, Texas, Right. Once they get to San Antonio, they need to be able to show proof that what their, their product, what their program does with players, with clients, works already. Right. You've got a tried and tested method of already working. OK, so the way this starts is you've got to build one solid location where you've got loads of clients coming in they're working with you you've built a team of coaches you've got great results players love what you do you know players are succeeding at their at their clubs on their teams right they're all they're all buzzing about what your company does about your training and you've built a really good uh, network of not just parents but coaches in your local area that know like trust you and also you build partnerships maybe with local schools or local organizations. Okay, so in that in that city that you're originally from, that your, your first location is at, you are number one at what you do. Okay, and, and that's pretty much in order to go national, you need to be number one in one location. Okay, so that your method of coaching, your reputation is all solid. And it's tried, proven, and already tested. And, you know, parents parents know what you do already. Okay? You've got a reputation. And, you, you know, you're promoting your work through social media as well. Okay? So, number one is you've got to start in one location. You've got to build that location to a point where it's successful. It's growing. It's buzzing. Parents love you, players love you, coaches want to work for your company, okay? And it's really growing and it's got a great reputation, okay? Now, second part, once we've got that solid first location, second part is now we've got to start to do our research in the, the other city or area that you want to expand your business into, okay? So, for example, if the first location is in Baltimore, Maryland, Okay, and now we want to tran we want to we want to take that concept and we want to take it into Texas, right? San Antonio to be more precise. Right, we need to do a couple of things, right? Number one, we need to we need to do some research in that area. So who is the competition? Who is already in that area? What are your competitors already offering? What's working for them? What's not working for them? How many clients do they have? Okay. What do they offer? Okay. And what, what could you come in and separate yourself from your competitors? So what would you be doing differently that is not already being offered in that area? Okay. Now, the next point would be, does that location have the right facility for my business? And what are the costs to use that facility? So if you're in, in soccer, right? then and you want to expand you need to look for a facility that you can train clients out of that you can use all year round and that can become a set place for all the training your for all your one-to-one -all -one, or your small groups or your camps or your clinics that you can run all your training out of that one facility Okay. And also, does it make financial costs, right? Are you are you spending a lot of money to use that space? If it's very expensive, then maybe it's not the right location for you at the moment. And we might need to look for somewhere else within that city, okay? I know because I've lived in, in Baltimore that some of the facilities around Baltimore, uh, Maryland, they are very, very expensive. Right. And I remember when I was coaching and working there, you know, there were there were locations that 
we we used that we used to well the company I used to work for hired out a uh, turf fields, and the price was ridiculous, right? They they were they were charging our our company anywhere between a hundred to to a hundred and twenty dollars per hour to use that turf field. Okay, now for that for the company it made sense because we had a we had a massive clientele. Okay, and we were we were a national com company. We weren't just in one one region, one location. So you need to make sure that you do the maths, you work out right how much is it this facility going to cost to run a session. Okay, because at the beginning, when you move into a new region or a location or a city or an area, okay, you need to work out right what what what's the maths if we use this facility and a, and we've only got a small amount of clients to begin with are we losing money are we breaking even or are we making a profit on that location okay so you have to do the maths at the beginning to see what works for you and your company you know the third bit is are your potential clients there so that's why we've got to do research in the area who's the competitor what type of clients are the are your competitors working with? If they are working with clients that fits your your perfect client profile, then maybe that's a good area to be in because they you know your potential clients are in that that area. Then is what is needed within that local area. So what what problems do your competitors solve, or if they don't solve any at all? Okay, what what help do players in that region need that you can come in and solve a problem for them okay so for some some regions right it might be a case of a company coming in and helping players get recruited to play for college okay because maybe they're in a, in an area where there's maybe one or two clubs but they're only really rec clubs they're run by volunteer parents Parents don't really have any idea about how to get their child recruited. So you can come in as the trainer, as the specialist and focus your training. And the ultimately the goal of your, of your training, of your coaching is to help players within that area to get recruited, to go and play at college and play at the next level. Okay. So that, that could be a problem you solve, but you need to do your research in that area. What is your competitor offering? What do they not offer that you can offer? Okay, and what problem can you come into that area, to that city and solve that is needed by parents? Okay. Also, last point I made, which goes back to the second in terms of does the location have the right facility, which is how expensive is the area? Okay. If you're if you're moving into an area such as, for example, Hawaii which is a very expensive region. Okay, I believe it's one of the most expensive regions in the United States. Okay, then ultimately it's not going to make financial sense at the beginning to go and move into there because you'll probably be losing money just because the the area, the island is very expensive uh, to rent. Okay, and also because it's an island, does it have the right facility for your business? That's another thing you've got to take into account, okay? So how expensive is the area? Does the area have the right facility? Are my clients in that area? Who is my competitor in that area? And where can I get clients from? How many clubs are in the area? How many high schools are in the area? How many elementary schools are in the area? Are there actually kids in the area that play soccer? Because if there's no kids and soccer isn't really popular, then ultimately you're not really going to get many clients from there. Okay? So you need to really study your market, study the city, and see exactly what it is like before you look to expand into that state, into that region, city, or area. Okay. The third bit is promote and market the business. Right. So now once we've ticked the boxes for the first two, we built a solid reputation within our within our own city. We've achieved we've achieved great results with clients, with customers. We've got a ton of testimonials, success stories. Uh, we build solid partnerships with with local brands, 
local organizations. We've now, you know, we've now found a right facility in the, in our in our new city that we've moved in. Every all the boxes are ticked. Now all we have to do is now we need to promote and market the business to our local customers, right? And our local parents, our local players, we need to promote, promote, promote. So that now we need to look to try and drive traffic into what we're doing. So an, an idea or an example would be, right, if my business is based in Baltimore, Maryland, and I'm looking to expand into Texas, San Antonio to be precise, I might go to San Antonio, I found the right facility, I found the right location. I might go in there and run a free clinic. Okay, and I'm opening this clinic up to 20 players. It's free of charge. All parents have to do is they have to sign up online and they need to make sure they get there. They sign up online, they put their details so that then after that clinic is over, we can then... Um, reach out to them about any upcoming one-to-one -one training we're looking to offer or small group training service that we're looking to offer okay but everything needs to be done online so that parents can subscribe and register their child onto our free clinic so once i've got my location in san antonio remember this is just an example okay now i need to look to see if i can build partnerships with local businesses that I can then promote my clinic to. So this might be your local bookstore. This might be a local school. It might be a local YMCA. It might be a local club. Maybe you partner with a club, you go in and offer to run a free clinic for their players, okay? And then the other bit is now we, once we have the, clean the free clinic or the event set up okay another way is we need to now talk to parents and and promote exactly what we do so i've made a the third point is paid uh, facebook ads or targeted marketing okay so paid facebook ads is obviously a very uh, popular one at the moment it's it's one that a lot of trainers do when they when they run a, a events in, in big cities. Okay, you can target your, your marketing to a specific type of parent. So your clinic is for players age 12 to 14 years old. Then you can target uh, parents on Facebook who may have children of that age and who are into soccer. Okay? Also, you can join Facebook groups with parents that are in soccer, you can promote via those Facebook groups, right? There's a number of ways that you can, you can do targeted marketing in order to build traction, to build interest, and ultimately to build traffic towards your, your free po promo event, okay? So that once you have those 15 or 20 uh, players in that one location, once you've got their information, the likelihood is that if they enjoy your training, they enjoy the experience, they like, they like you as a coach, they like your what you offer, the likelihood is that parents will sign up to continue training with you. Okay. Now, I personally what when I work with coaches on this, and coaches are looking to build a, a new location, typically what I get them to do. Is and what I encourage coaches to do is that unless there's about 20 to 25 uh, players signed up to a camp or clinic, then it's not really worth uh, running that event. Okay, so for example, if we're moving from Baltimore to San Antonio or we're just looking to expand, if we don't have at least minimum 20 kids subscribed or registered onto our free clinic in San Antonio, then it's not worth us really running the event, okay? Because you've got to take into account, if if you get 20 kids that do your free event, okay, 20 kids is a good number because half of them 
won't want won't continue training with you okay so you might end up you know registering anywhere between 12, 10 to 12 kids from those 20 you could move them into your group training which is your month to month uh, tra actual training program okay so once we run these events we've got to make sure that we've got good amount of numbers because most parents will just come for the experience. They'll come for the experience, come to try it out, and then they won't continue. There'll be half that won't continue. There'll be another half that will, and they'll decide to carry on training with you. Okay. But we want to make sure that if we have, if we are running a camp or clinic event, we've got minimum amount of 20, 20 players registered onto that camp or clinic. So that that way it makes sense because once it's over, the likelihood is half of them will continue training with you. Okay, so hopefully this video has helped you. If you need more help, as I mentioned at the beginning of, of the video, you can get in contact with me. There's two ways to do that. Number one is via, via Zoom. Okay, so visit the Canonly link in the description of this video. You can book a free 15 to 20 minute Zoom call. I can discuss a couple of the points with you that, that I've mentioned here, or we can just talk about your business and see what, what you need help with. And I can show you some actionable steps to take this week to grow and scale. Or if you just want to send me a question, you can do that as well. Send it to my email, which is makemoneycoachingsports at gmail.com. Okay, before you go, make sure you subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with all the latest content that we put out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.